seem to step on. It's Fiverr Friday. Welcome. It is the 29th. We've got just another day or two left in January, and then we are on to February. I'm so excited, and I'm so excited to be coming to you today. If you are new to Fiverr Friday, this is a time where we get together live, and you come, and I do a little spiel, and you bring your questions and comments, and we try to... Uh, I try to answer them the best that I can, and, you know, we go from there. (laughs) Um, Let's see. Today we've got – I got something exciting for you. I want to talk to you about the requirements section on your Fiverr gigs, but how important they are for you to make money. A lot of people aren't utilizing their requirements, and I've implemented this – I guess it's not a trick. Maybe it's a – just a little, not even a hack if you would call it that, but it's just um, maybe a process that I've implemented with my requirements that have helped me double, triple my income on Fiverr. I'm excited to share that with you today. Um, uh, but uh, real first, before that, please make, uh, please you know, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, it would be great to um, to have that happen. And also, I wanted to point out about the subscriptions. I know last time we talked about Fiverr subscriptions, they came out with that. Uh, most of us have turned it on. I've turned it on in all my gigs. So far, I've not had anyone uh, talk about them yet to me. No one's approached me about the subscriptions yet. And I don't think I've really even mentioned it to anyone yet. But uh, definitely, um, I'm uh, you know hoping that it, uh, it works out. So if you guys are on today, could you go ahead and... Uh, uh, say hello. I'm not seeing. I'm not sure if YouTube is on. I'm not sure who all is watching. Uh, sometimes restream is odd, right? Like it, it comes on and it it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I'm not sure. There it goes. It looks like some of the. Uh, there we go. Now we're connected to a bunch of different places. That's cool. Well, welcome. <laughs> Welcome. I don't know why it takes a little while, I guess, for Restream to connect, but I'm glad that um, that uh, it's working out. Okay, here we go. So there are some people. Good. It's good to have you guys. Thank you so much uh, for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good, 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 good. I'm glad YouTube is working. So um, real quick, also, just so you know, there's a little uh, link on the bottom. Well, it's not a link. It's a little, um, maybe it's a little money side or whatever to for a super chat. So if you feel inclined to um, leave a small donation so we can keep this channel going. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, and um, But moving forward, talking real quick about the submissions and then we're going to go into or the subscriptions and then we're going to go into talking about how you can um, double, triple your income using requirements. And I'm going to actually show you what I'm doing on mine. I'm going to pull it up so you can actually see it. But uh, I've had the subscriptions going on Fiverr for... Psh, a while now since they came out, I guess a week or so ago, and I've not gotten any business or anybody even mentioned the subscriptions to me, you know, as customer wise. So, uh, you know, I'm now I've not mentioned it to anybody myself. So it's not like I've been promoting it, but I've not seen anything from it. So if you guys have uh, gotten any business or anything from the subscription, please feel free to post in the comments. I'd love to chat with you about it. But let's go ahead and move on to what I wanted to talk to you today, and that is the requirements page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up my requirements page, and then I'm going to switch you around. Here we go. Uh, So you can actually see – oh, no, that's not it. That's the chat box. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and I got to lower this one. There you go. So as you're seeing, sorry, I had to maneuver some stuff there. So as you're seeing, uh, this is my requirements page on one of my gigs. And the gig, this is my podcast intro and outro gig. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because I think uh, as you look at Fiverr and you're setting up a gig, we've got our overview pricing description requirements gallery. The requirements section, at least for me when I started, wasn't very, um, you know, it wasn't more than me just putting in there, uh, please attach your script and your directions, right? There wasn't anything else. And then uh, I realized that, you know, these are, you know, Fiverr gives you the options to make these questions a requirement 
Uh, I mean, like an actual like they have to answer them. They can you can they can be a requirement, but they don't have to be right. Like they can't move on unless they answer them. And I realized, well, you know what? There's an issue I was having, which was charging commercial rights, right, and charging broadcast rights. This was a big thing for me, and I was struggling with that. I couldn't get people to pay for it. And a lot of the time, I noticed what the problem was was that there the people didn't know what it was. Okay, they were confused about what are commercial rights, what are broadcast rights, do I need them, you know, does it apply to me, etc. So, you know, I realized that I needed to find a way to tell people what they were other than just my FAQs, right, on the bottom of my gig, and also make them specifically have to say they want them, they need them, or they don't need them. So what I want to kind of go over with you today is how I set up my requirements. Now, please uh, feel free to use this as a template. I'm always a big advocate for you not copying verbatim what people are doing, but I think you can use this as a template and some of the things that I use. Um, and you can also find all this stuff on my course, but uh, I wanted to kind of talk to you today about these different sections and some things that you might not be using. So, of course, the first part is I make it very clear that you know, they, I want them to leave their script, but as a a reference, it's important to make sure you are asking them right from the beginning. Hey, what directions do you have for me acting wise? Because you know, I like people paying for revisions, but the reality is, is that's a struggle when you're trying to work with people who don't want to pay revisions. So you're trying, you want to get it right from the beginning, right? Uh, so it's really important that you put down in here, you know, please tell me what you're doing now, because of that I charge for revisions. I make it very clear again from the beginning that if they do not put down anything. Or they do not, you know, put down uh, adequate instructions and then they come back and want that different because this is subjective. Remember, acting is subjective. Now, we're not talking about you misspelling like you missing a word, but it being subjective. I specifically tell them to uh, that they're going to be billed for a revision. OK, the, the important the language here is important too that you're actually putting it in there. Remember, expectations are key. If you don't have expectations, your client is not going to uh, know where they stand, in which case that's when the fighting begins. But if you have expectations up front by sharing what they are, you're going to have less problems with your client. Does that make sense? So I start off the bat just by asking them, hey, please you know, put in your, um, your script and any directions. And I also make that free text. Okay, so that means they can attach anything, but they can also put in free text like typing in their script. All right, now because this is a podcast intro and outro gig, I also have another section here uh, talking about extra effects. And again, this is it's so important that you put in, you don't skip over this requirement section by putting the bare minimum, right? Each gig is going to be different. So in this one, I've talked about if you've purchased the full production extra, please let me know what type of music. So I have an extra on this page where they can buy music and effects together, like a full production, okay? And in which case I'm asking them if they do that, see, there's two things going on here. I'm asking them if they've done it to give me directions, but while I'm asking them if they've done it, I've also, right, kind of led them down the belief that they need to be aware of it, right? They might not be aware of it. Okay, so which case I've talked to them now, I'm telling them what they need to be aware. Like you could see, if you would like me to fully purchase your podcast with music and effects and have not purchased the extra ad, please send me the uh, extra for full production below and include the description of the types you want. You see what I mean? Like I give them that opportunity again here. Now, it's interesting, Fiverr caught on to this, and they've added it themselves. Like, if you go to check out, like, if somebody clicks on the continue button, it takes them to the next part where you've got all your extras there. But it still doesn't go as in-depth as I am right here. And it doesn't make you fill out anything. Like, they can just skip back over that and quickly hit the, you know, the continue button or the buy button. Then once they do that, it takes them here. So the next part is the part that I really wanted to get to, and this is a part that's really helped me a great deal through my Fiverr journey, and that's adding these two multiple choice questions. And I have to admit, I found this upon uh, happenstance that Fiverr does this, but you know, Fiverr does do multiple choice. That's not new, but interestingly enough, 
the multiple choice that Fiverr does, all right, here, so I just hit edit real quick, um, is that when they do that, they actually put little dot, like little, uh, you know, the little holes that you can like click. So somebody just comes in here and they can either, they can either um, click yes or they can click no. The cool thing about this is, is that it actually ends up coming up on the order. So when the order goes through, this is what I love about this, it actually shows up that they have clicked yes or no on the commercial rights, which, get, which gives you some leverage to say, hey, you clicked no, so you can't use this, or you clicked yes. So a lot of times, sometimes people will will buy their buy the stuff from me. They'll see this, and they're like, oh, I need commercial rights. So they come back afterwards and purchase the extra, or they say yes, they click yes, and I send them the extra, in which case they purchase it. Does that make sense? So like this is a really great method, and because of this yes and no, it just ends up being two dots, so they can't write anything. All they can do is click one or the other, and it shows up and it stays for the whole order, which I love. Um, and it gives me instant feedback, whether they get it or not. Now, I also put, do you need commercial rights? Uh, then I talk about what it is. This, again, is very important, right? Uh, for business use, that's just non-paid advertising, but it's for pretty much any business use. So let's be straight. About 90 to 95% of all jobs on Fiverr should include commercial rights. If you are just starting out, OK, this can be a challenge because people are looking when you're just starting out and you're trying to get yourself out there. You're offering lower prices. You know, people don't have a lot of money, so they're trying to connect with people who are offering lower prices. But this is a way for you to identify with people that, hey, they need to buy commercial rights. And instead of you, you know, just letting it go by, this is excuse me, a great opportunity for you to pick up some extra money on the back end. All right, and I'd say this is important. This is a one-time buyout fee for $35, okay? So I do that, and I do the same thing for broadcast rights, okay? I say the same exact thing for broadcast rights, and I go in and talk about what broadcast rights are as well. Now, these are my prices. I do $60. You can charge whatever. If you're just starting out uh, and you're charging like $5 for 100 words, 200 words or something like that, you know, I recommend doing like 5 or $10 for commercial rights and 10 or $15 for broadcast rights to start. Remember, this is a start. It's not the end. The end is we're going to keep building our stuff. Uh, but right now, this is just a start, and I think it's important to build a one upon the other so you don't start off too high because if you're charging $5 for a couple hundred words and then you're charging $50 for commercial rights, your likelihood is you're not going to sell very many of those. But if you start off at $5 for a couple hundred words and then you're selling commercial rights for another $5, the likelihood is, is you're going to sell that. So then you're going to be able to upsell a lot easier than you would on the $50. And again, remember, this is just a beginning place. It's not our ending place. Our end goal is to continue to raise our price as the market demands it from you, supply and demand. The busier you get, the more you're going to raise your price, right? The supply and demand. Um, so, okay, so this is pretty straightforward uh, for, you know, your, your requirements there. Now, I go ahead and do two more things because, again, I'm big about sharing with people my expectations for re revisions, I work with a lot of people and I do actually gig reviews, which you can get on uh, VOSJourney.com. But a lot of the gig reviews I do, I find that people don't define, they don't define in actual words. Like they don't say, they don't define their revision policy. And I think that's really important because if you're not defining your revision policy, like right here, you can see I have all revisions cost $10 per 75 words. I say that right off the bat. Whether you offer free revision or not, that's fine, but you still need to... Uh, even you still need to actually define what the free revision is too, right? Because again, I always use the example: what if you got paid to do a thousand words and you offer a free revision, and they take it back to corporate, and they're like, "Oh, we love it," but corporate decided they just want a different script. But we got a free revision, so read the whole thing over again. Well, that's not cool. <laughs> that's not cool at all, right? But since you didn't define what it was, since you didn't have an expectation laid out about what that revision was and how many words it was. That that is a that's a problem. You know, one thing I really love about Fiverr is that it forces us to put this system that Fiverr's created forces us to put these things into the context of how you know we are putting our own structure together. We have to put a structured business approach together so that we're tackling each issue that might come up.
So that's how I do it. I make sure that, again, they know uh, the cost that it, that it takes. And, of course, if it's something that I mess up on, I always do. I always fix that for free. But I do ask, and this is another way to upsell, do you need to purchase revisions? And you'd be surprised how many people purchase a revision. They don't mind purchase pre-purchasing a revision if you offer it. I offer pre-purchase revisions, and I often have people purchase one, two, three revisions. And they barely use them. But they purchase them if they need them. It's a great way, again, to upscale or upsell your, um, your, your gig. Now, moving on to the last part of this, which is one of my favorite parts, something that has really helped me dial in my business is this simple question, what made you choose to buy from me? I love this question because, as you know, we do have the opportunity to get some feedback via their um, reviews, but you know you don't always get a review, and also the review can be very canned. This is a great thing because they have to ask it. I mean, you you can mark mandatory um, of all these questions. I mark mandatory of all of them, and they have to answer it, and to me – it just it, it like I get some great feedback about why people chose me. And if you are get, if you put this question in there, you'll start getting feedback from people like you'll start seeing why they're choosing you. Is it your voice um, style? Is it a particular spot in your demo? In which case, if you start to see more people say, hey, really like this spot in your demo, maybe you move that spot up front. Or maybe it is the first spot in your demo, in which case the style of read, maybe you need to take that style and start using it other places that you're trying to give voiceover business. Maybe this is indicating a style. This is exactly what happened to me. My fourth spot on my demo gets by far 80, 90 percent of all of the people who buy from me mention that they want me to do it. That's what I get you know, hired to do most of the time. People who've seen my videos, you know, like the videos from clients, that's what people hire me for. Okay. And it's front and center on my demo. It's the first one. When I aligned those two together, my business took off. This has helped me a lot. All right. It's also, it's also, um, people leave things about like, they liked my description about how I make a promise about what I do or the process, or they like, you know, the, the portfolio, the wide range of work that I can do. That's another thing that I find out that people really like a wide range of things, even if they're choosing you for one thing. So this is just a great question. Even if you're just starting out, it's a great question. Like if you get people asking you or saying, hey, I really like this because you, um, I like your price. Okay, well, that's that's good, but you know your price is a le- you know, the leading factor of why people are working with you, not necessarily your voice at that moment. But that's okay because then you know that at least maybe you're lining up in your mind and you're marketing what you're offering at that moment. Like what is the major thing people are buying or like why they're buying it from you. Okay, it's just a great way to collect data. I love this question. I think everybody should have it at least for their own personal use. Um, All right, you guys. Well, listen, this is the requirements section, and this is how I lay mine out. You're more than welcome to, you know, of of course, lay out whatever way you want to. If you notice on this one, I have six questions. I usually like to keep it between five or six questions overall. I find that that is a good mix uh, because if you've ever bought something on Fiverr, which, by the way, I recommend that you do. You go to Fiverr, buy something so that you can go through the process and see what customers are going through, see how they see it, because the better you you can see how they see it, the easier it's going to be for you to help them through it and also understand these parts. But I find that you know after five or six, it has become way too much. But this is um, this is how I and 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 I like how the multiple choice works because it's easy. They don't have to fill out. A, they don't have to type in a bunch of stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this back up, switch back over, cool beans. Uh, I hope that was helpful to everybody. This is a great time now for you to take your questions, comments, anything that you have, stick it into the chat, and uh, we can dive into this puppy, and I can answer them and so forth. You might have some of your own things that you put in the requirements. I'd love for you to uh, to do that, but uh, you know, please feel free to ask away. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive in over here. Oh, by the way, let's get my Fiber Friday mug. Let me get some coffee. Mm-hmm. I did that sip right there. So you go. Mm. That's a good sip. All right, <laughs> let's go. Voice, but the voice Brad of Brad. What's up? This is gonna be a good one. Thanks, Anthony. What's up? Welcome, out of work professor. 
Uh, awesome. Thank you for being here, you guys. Scott, good to have you. Jim, what's up? Eric, from uh, Flyer here, checking in on YouTube Sweet. Dana, what's up? YouTube is all good for me. Happy Friday. Happy Fiber Friday. Absolutely. Uh, Dell here. Hey, Dell. Good to have you. Zach, my man. What's up? Peter Lazarus, what's up? Good to have you. Um, let's see. Ali Sharice. Hello. Hi. Thank you for your advice. You are most welcome. Stitch Doctor. Hello. I like that name. Wolf Creep Training. What's up? Good to have you, Rudy. Hello, hello, Jeremy. Hello, fellow VOs. Hey, Jeremy. Out of work, professor. Um, uh, real quick, I'm just seeing right now JB Music. Thank you so much for your super chat, as well as Zach. Thank you guys so much for that. JB Music says, "Happy Fiverr Friday." Had my best month on Fiverr yet. That's awesome, man. Congrats. Thanks as always for the great advice, Anthony. Congrats. That's that's great. Good job. Zach says, uh, here you go. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. I appreciate you, Zach. You, you support me every week. Thank you, my friend. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Um, let's see. Out of work professor said, hi, Anthony. I noticed that you have to do very little, if any, processing of your audio other than breath removal. Is that more your equipment, your audio chain, or something else? Uh, it's all of it. So when I first started, I was all over the place. And I, I and, and a lot of it because I didn't understand all the different parts of everything. The equipment that I have now allows me to do a lot more without me having it allows me to do a lot more pre-recording. All right. Or or pre-post if you or, or pre-post <laughs> pre pre-recorded, meaning that when I record now, my audio is actually EQ'd and compressed. What you're hearing right now, it's going through my system. You're hearing audio from me that's EQ'd and compressed right now. I don't have to do anything to it because the system I have is already doing that. Um, and I didn't used to have that. Okay, that's changed a lot. My space, when I finally got my space completely dialed in, as, as good as I could get it, all right, and it EQ'd perfectly, that took about 75% of the issues I had away. And after doing all of that and spending time, which, by the way, in, in all honesty, took me about two, three years to get to that point, right? Because I ended up buying a whisper room, and um, which I think I could have probably built on my own. But I'm not going to lie. I wanted the whisper room. I thought it was cool. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was awesome. I got a whisper room. And I bought it because of that. And uh, I'm very happy for it. I'm very happy I have it, and it works out great. It's a four by six, but I was able to really deck it out too on the inside with the proper acoustics, and it sounds great. So that with my microphone, also with making sure that my computer, my monitors, my speakers, my monitors, my interface, Everything was outside of the booth. So the only thing in my booth was a computer monitor that I run dual. So in my booth, I can control all my, you know, my computer, my CPU outside with a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard. So there is no extra sound in my booth, right? When I first started recording, I had my hobo fort was around everything. So whenever I recorded, not only was I getting the extra loudness from a $99 interface, but I was getting the loudness from my computer running. I was getting this bunch of, you know, bunch of, bunch of noise, extra noise from the, the speakers. Speakers hiss. I mean, like if you get up close to them, they hiss. All right. Yes, you can eliminate a lot of a lot of it. Absolutely. But I've been around. If you've been around live theater or live music sound enough, you know, monitors and speakers, they're going to hiss a little bit. All right. And, you know, it is it is a part of it. So you've got to be aware of that noise. And a fan running in your laptop or your computer or your your CPU, whatever. Um, I got all of that dialed in. Then from there, it was quite simple to make a chain that dealt with my mouth noise because what was left was mouth clicks, mouth noise, uh, any extra background noise that might filter through. And uh, that was it. And then, of course, as you mentioned, breaths sometimes. But that's, I mean, that's so at that, that journey that took me, you know, a couple of years. Now it takes me very little time to 
um, edit or anything like that. The editing process. Honestly, the time that takes me the most when editing is if I do like a full production podcast, like we were talking about, where I do music and effects. Then that takes me more because I got to go get the music and I mix it. Of course, it's lots of fun, but it takes longer. But pretty much it takes me no time at all. So absolutely. Uh, out of work, professor, I would like to be able to spend much less time processing audio like you do and need to figure out how to get there. So I am. So I posted a, a poll in a VO's Journey Facebook group and I got some really incredible um, feedback from people really wanting uh, a course or a training course on how to process your audio, something really, you know, in depth. And uh, so I'm going to be working on that to put out a really great one because I know I have beginners, a beginner tutorial on Audacity and Adobe Audition, but I think processing people have asked for something really special for how to process your audio to get you know, past, um, or, or to go a lot faster. So I'm going to be working on that. So thank you so much, my friend. Okay. So again, JB music and Zach, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rudy says, I have reservations about subscriptions. It seems, um, what does that say? Uh, anti, uh, ethical, anti-ethical. Is that what you're trying to say? i if I apologize, uh, to the way to do business, uh, the way we do business. Um, Antithetical. <laughs> I don't know the word. I'm like, I should know how to say that word, I feel like. Um, you know, I I think, it's my thoughts, I think that, you know, Fiverr's motto, all right, and this they've proven it, right, is changing the way we do business online. Uh, but I think changing the way service providers do business could be also included in that. And I think subscriptions again, go to that part again, where they're trying to change the mindset of people about, hey, listen, you know, even though this is a service, we want you to approach it like a product. And I, there was a great post in the VO's journey a while ago, or, or two days, three days ago, I was reading it about we were having a good conversation, a really good conversation about usage rights and everything. Everybody uh, was being very amic uh, amicable and it was just really nice. And um uh, one gentleman had posted a nice long post about, you know, the difference between a business and, you know, a service, if you will. Um, but I think where I wanted to add on to that, uh, that he had, but because the reality is, is, you know, businesses, right? We've talked about this. Uh, I've talked about this. You know, most of us make jobs, Right. Services are like jobs instead of a business where I like to think of a business as something that I could walk away from. All right. And I could still make money because we use our voices. That can be a challenge. But all right. If we if we take a step back and say, OK, well, we're not going to go that far well, you know, without using our voice. I think subscriptions can give you a way to, you know, have some security. OK, now, whether it works out or not, I don't know. I, like I said, I haven't gotten any work, but I'm assuming that's what Fiverr is thinking, like a lot of other software that we or, you know, websites we go to and we have to subscribe to them. So I'm interested to see how it pans out, but we'll find out. And uh, I'm not I'm not uh, I, I'm my you know, I think my opinion is still out on that one. So voice over Angela. Hello, Angela. Uh, let's see. Jack says. I can say from experience, since listening to your advice to make commercial and broadcast rights a uh, yes or no compulsory answer, I've had 100% less issues. Awesome, Jack. Absolutely. It works. It works. Um, all right. The you, the Yuri. Hi, Anthony. I'm a VO from Holland. Hello. Welcome. Uh, in three and a half months, I'm a level two seller. Congrats. That's awesome. But since three weeks, my orders are not daily anymore. Around 70 clicks, but no conversion stands. Is this normal? <clears throat> so to answer your question, uh, yes, it is normal. And I work with a lot of people on Fiverr. And I can tell you Fiverr, and they Fiverr admits this, they switch people around. So half of the month, this group over here might be over here. Half of the month, this group over here might be up. Uh, they definitely switch. So you'll see people saying having a great first of the month, having a you know, not so great half, uh, other half of the month. I fear that the more Fiverr grows, the more challenging it will get, which is why like the requirements page, it's why you got to utilize because the thing that, that, that can help you is repeat customers. So I would say, too, that, you know, keep pushing forward, keep adding. Um, I don't know if you have all of your gigs up. I don't know much about. But if you are a level two seller, you could have 20 gigs up 
And again, if you want more business and you don't have all you want, put up more gigs. You only stop putting up gigs if you have all the business you want. Okay? But it can be normal. Fiverr fluctuates. Uh, okay, Rob. Let's see. What's up, Rob? Happiest of days, everyone. Good to have you, Rob. Let's see. Rudy says, hi, Angela. <laughs> uh, Louise, hello. What do you include as a revision? I.e., do you specify how many words are one revision and how many words is that? Yeah, I think we went over that. I do. I specify how many words. Uh, and that one gig you saw was $10 per 75 words. But what I like to do usually is make sure that if I charge X amount of words, like if I charge $10 for 100 words, I charge $5 for 50 words. Does that make sense? Like I charge $5 for 50 words for revision so that I'm always charging the amount of words. Remember, we're not... Again, this goes back to how pricing works on Fiverr and that some people don't understand. And and the critics of Fiverr, I think, sometimes misinterpret the words. We're charging per words, not per time. Right. So if you if I charge you five dollars for 100 words, I'm not charging you five dollars for an hour of work. Right. I'm charging you just for that hundred words. So if it takes me three minutes to do that, that's what I'm charging you. Do you see what I mean? So I want to make sure that I'm always charging even revision is the same amount of price words that I'm charging. That's just my theory about it. You see what I mean? And I think that's where people, in my mind, make the misunderstanding uh, about how pricing works on Fiverr. Uh, so that's how I do that. Okay, let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Where, oh, I lost it. Timothy says, have a meow tasting Fiverr Friday, everyone. Absolutely. There are my cats running around somewhere. Uh, let's see. The Yuri says, extra detail. I'm really active on Fiverr since October last year. Of course, I'll always be busy with getting my gig better, but the stats with clicks and conversions are sometimes uncertain. Absolutely. It happens. Absolutely. Uh, character voices. Hello. Good to have you. Grant, do you use OBS for doing these videos? Yes, I do. I do OBS. And the only thing I don't like about OBS, uh, is that you have to expand as you guys can tell sometimes when you share a screen, I have a large screen, it can, the words can be small. Now you can change the view on OV OBS, like making it more, but I haven't done all that yet. Like making, making it go in a little bit more. So the words are bigger, but I do use OBS. Yes. It's free software. I like it a lot. All right. So let's see. Um, may, uh, Nate Mac voiceover. What's up? Do you require repeat customers to answer all requirements, like someone who orders weekly. I do. It's a requirement. They can't get past it. Everybody has to answer it all the time. Great topic, Anthony. Thank you. Paul Jones uh, says, happy Fiverr Friday. What's up? I mean, says, great topic, Anthony. Thank you. Paul says, happy Fiverr Friday. It looks like a happy Fiverr Friday and back and forth with Paul. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Cool. The Yuri, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you um, for your awesome. Wow, thank you so much. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 euros, 30. Wow, you guys are doing great. I mean, my goodness, I'm going to take you out to dinner. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, you guys. Thank you. I'm not sure if I'm seeing this right. It looks like there's all kinds of... of <laughs> thank you. I don't know if it, on my screen it just shows the same people doing it. So thank you guys so much. Um, Sherry says hi, Anthony. As promised for your support. Thank you so much, Sherry. I really appreciate that. Um, the Yuri. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your great videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, wow. Thank you. Dana says, I find myself really winded and holding my breath at times while recording. I don't know if it's just lack of patience or, or practice or listening to myself in headphones and trying to make corrections on the fly. Dana, I this used to happen to me all the time. I used to get out of breath while I was recording because I didn't know, I didn't feel confident. And I always I call it the mile of crap between our mouths and the microphone. And even though we're alone, you can step in front of the microphone and still feel nervous. And uh, this happened to me a lot. And what I would say to you, something that actually helped is I forced myself to start to read ahead more. 
And what I found was, is as I read ahead more and I became better at reading out loud, I, you know, I was a teacher for 12, 13 years. Um, you know, I, I was often speaking in front of people. I was on stage for tens of thousands of people. Like I've, I've, I'm not afraid of getting in front of people, but what I realized was even as a teacher and as an actor, I, I never read a script, like constantly read from a script. Do you see what I mean? Like I memorized things or I improv, but never read other people's words as my own right off the bat like that because I didn't know what was coming. And as voiceover actors, we don't know what's coming unless we pre-read something or memorize it. So a lot of us step up to the plate and we just start going, right? And we're not comfortable with it because one, we're not that good reading other people's words out loud yet and comfortable at it, comfortable at making it sound like it's us speaking. And the answer to that is practice. You've got to practice. you got to get these scripts and practice. It takes time. It took me a while, but I know exactly what you're talking about. You just have to practice. That's all. It's not, it's, it's totally normal. It's totally normal. I think it happens to a lot of people. A lot of people are probably too embarrassed to mention it because it's it, it doesn't make sense to happen to us, but it does. And a lot of the reason is is because as we're talking, we're getting out of breath because we know we're not supposed to take a breath because of the sentence, but we we can't read far enough far enough ahead to know when the sentence ends or when we should stop. So everything is seems so out of whack because we're not used to it. I promise you, it will get better. It will. Mm. Great question, Dana. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Dana also says, I find myself really winded. Okay, that was the same. I don't know if this is like repeating on, I'm not sure, but uh, let's see. Um, Chili Peppers, what's up? Says, hey, Anthony, I watched your how to edit an audacity video. Cool. Um, and used a setting called RX7 and I couldn't figure out how to get that on Audacity. How do you get that? Thanks, love your videos. Awesome, Chili Peppers. Yeah, so basically, when you go in Audacity, you, um, there's this, uh, it's under, it's under a tab that's called, um, uh, there's a tab that calls uh, in, um, plugins, insert plugins or delete plugins. And you go to that and basically it'll pull up all the plugins that are downloaded on your computer. All right. And if it's from Nyquist, also Nyquist, because that's how some of the uh, ACX plugins are under Nyquist plugins, there's a tab for that. But that's in the upper ribbon. Um, and I'd have to pull up ACX to, or I'd have to put Audacity to know exactly which one it is. But there is a, a edit or add plugins. I think it's add or edit plugins uh, on, on the ribbon up there under one of the tabs. Um, towards the end, <laughs> towards the end of the ribbon. So that's how you find it, and you you put it in there. And then you go down there. Once you pull it up, it's going to pull up all of the uh, uh, downloaded um, plugins on your computer, and then you have to activate it, okay? Um, let's see. Rudy, uh, there you go. <laughs> Ray says, going to be starting on Fiverr soon. Awesome. How, is impor- how important is it to get your prices right straight away? I'm very uncertain of what, to set it at. No, absolutely. Great question. Well, I actually, you know, that's why I made my um, rates, uh, my rate guide on Avio's journey. You can go there. It's, it's a free rate guide. I wanted to set up a rate guide for like us. <laughs> so, you know, no, I have nothing against the GVA rate guide. Um, uh, it's great, but it's not um, most of us, like it's not what most people are charging, honestly. And um, so I set up a rate guide that kind of takes in consideration your level too, whether you're beginner, um, intermediate, or you've been doing this for a long time based on a bunch of research I did using the guides, for example, using my own experience, talking to, um, you know, leaders in the industry as also as well as some um, owners of companies like Voquint and Voices.com and different things like that to, to kind of put that in place. So that rate guide is great. But know this. You're not going to screw up your business. You're not. You've got I've, – I've made so many mistakes. You're not going to screw it up. I promise. If you make a mistake, that's okay. Just switch it. 
You know, it's fine. So don't don't worry about it. You just got to dive in and go for it, okay? But that rate guide will help you on aviosjourney.com. Uh, let's see, JB Music. I'm curious what what you would suggest as a sort of priority checklist in terms of upgrading equipment, space, or getting a more professional demo or demos done. I've got funds built up and a bit stuck. Well, absolutely. I feel like you're helping me plug stuff. Well, you know, we do demos. Uh, I've got a team of people and myself. We put demos together. Uh, so if you are looking for a demo, it's always over at VOSjourney.com. But uh, for this purpose is, here's what I recommend. I wish from the beginning I knew more about how vital my equipment was. Uh, and now I did, I did get that there was better equipment. But I didn't get how important my interface was. So of all the equipment, my interface was one of the last pieces of my equipment to upgrade. And when I upgraded my interface, that changed my whole business. And that, you know, that was something that I didn't think about forever. You know, like I bought my mic, my 416, which is like a thousand dollar mic. You know, I have an iMac. I've got these things, you know, I finally brought, bought JBL speakers, which was another thing or monitors. I never had monitors before. I use headphones. Quite honestly, I hate mixing in headphones. I think it's awful. I can't stand it because the sound is, I just don't like the sound. And my, my monitors, I love the idea because most people aren't listening to our stuff with headphones on. OK, uh, yet most of us use headphones in order to mix all of our stuff. And a lot of times the headphones and I'm going to be square with you, unless you've got a really good pair of headphones, they don't sound good. <laughs> like they say, if you feel like you listen to your stuff in your headphones, and you're like, what is this? I, it sounds awful. It could be your headphones. I'm not kidding you. I got so so. So my my advice to you is me going off about headphones. My advice to you is really look at. Your interface needs to be your computer. This is another thing, your computer. Your computer and your interface are so important. And I think they're like the least sexy things that we have, right? Like, let's be honest. We love the microphone. Like, I love my microphones. Like, you want, we want this really cool microphone or some really cool, like, gizmo or gadget, you know, like some, some you know, stand that moves around or some cool looking cords. Like, we love this kind of stuff or pop filters or uh, shock mounts. I love it. Um, but the reality is, is that your computer and your interface um, and cords are probably the, mo and the most important thing besides your space. Your space should be the number one thing you work on all the time. Your space. Because your space, once your space is completely dialed in, everything else is easy. Then the equipment will shine. All right? But remember, really expensive equipment... We'll just make, you know, a crappy space that much more crappy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a crappy treated space. All right. So, you know, it's important to take your space in consideration, your interface, your computer, your microphone, monitors, all those things. But I would definitely look at price ranges, you know, like I think $500, like th things between like $300 to $700. You start getting into a good range for interfaces. Um, and then, you know, microphones, you know, there, there's a couple of microphones around a thousand dollars, like the TLM 103 or the 416 that are pretty good microphones that can last you forever. I think that sound amazing. And if you have a good interface, uh, I love the Apollo twin. That's just me. Make sure if you get the Apollo twin, you try, you get the, um, lightning or the, um, Thunderbolt, don't the, I've had a lot of people have a trouble with the USB plugs, especially with PC and Mac. I love Apple. I love Apple because it processes so much faster a lot of times than than CPUs or computers. Uh, I mean, um, uh, Windows based computers and stuff. So, anyways, that's just my take on it. I uh, hope that helps. Uh, going to your demo. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot about your demo. Getting to your demo, it's important that you are ready for it for like a good depending on how much you're willing to pay for it you know what i mean i think a good place to start especially when you're starting out is to find a place where there's a good price like we do a demo uh, i have a demo that we start at it's like it's 500 dollars um for you know the demo services um at, for people who are starting out instead of three grand there's nothing wrong with that 
because that's a good demo as well. But a lot of that comes with coaching too. So I think it's a good place to start. If you're just beginning, you need a demo. But just like me when I first started, I wasn't ready to do – I wasn't ready like acting-wise to, to put that much money into a demo because you know it was going to be almost wasted. So anyways, those are just some of my thoughts. So you definitely want to move up incrementally. But I can tell you from a demo standpoint, every time you move up a demo and you get better as an actor – you know what I mean? You know, every six months to a year, you want to try to get better and get a new demo or new samples out. All right, let's see. Um, character voices. It does work. I also include commercial in it and charge for broadcast. Awesome. Audie says, hey, Anthony, I joined Facebook group yesterday. Welcome. Good to have you. Uh, character voices, you have to buy RX-7. Yes, you do have to buy RX-7. Uh, Daniel Smith says, yo, AP on my way to level two seller. Thank you. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Congrats, Daniel. Um, let's see. Chili peppers. I'm pretty new to Fiverr and just got my fifth job on Fiverr during this live. Ha! <laughs> Congrats. That's awesome. They know that you're focusing on Fiverr. Uh, let's see. Ali Sharice. I'm new to Fiverr, but I would love to do audiobooks. Absolutely. Put up an audiobook gig on Fiverr. A lot of people do a lot of audiobooks through Fiverr. That's how I grew. That's another way I grew my business on Fiverr. And people pay, usually they can play, pay close industry rates on Fiverr or more. More on Fiverr. So it's a good place for that. Chili Peppers, character, board, character voice that I see. Thank you for the answer. Ollie Share says, I was told you do the first five for free, then charge $5. Uh, error, first five for free. We don't do anything. Yeah, we don't do anything for free on there. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Sorry about that. Yeah, we don't do anything for free. Uh, Tom Johnson says, are you auditioning for a Folgers commercial today? <laughs> I feel like it. Folgers. Good. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. There you go, Folgers. It's in your cup. There you go. That was my Folgers spot. Uh, <laughs> thanks for all the great content, AP. Happy Fiber Friday, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. You too. Audie says, hey, Anthony, I recorded a voiceover for my school project, but when I run my presentation through OBS, the voiceover sounded awful. Any tips? That sucks. I've actually found that, for me, OBS works great for my audio. You've got to go into the sound section and make sure it's all set correctly. I, I it took me a while and a lot of videos on YouTube to get it all set up correctly through OBS. So you definitely need to make sure that you're working through that. So I would definitely do, you know, go to the sound section, advanced options. You got to really get everything streaming right. At least that's what happened to me because my streams used to be awful as well as anything. But now all my videos, everything I run through OBS uh, and it sounds great. So yeah, sorry. I couldn't be more help on that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Peter says, true. Monitors give you a nice flat response uh, and are way better to mix because of natural sound. Most people are listening on stereos, TVs, cars, wireless speakers like JBL Flip. Absolutely. And one other thing, too, I will say about monitors. Make sure, you guys, when you do get monitors, okay, uh, when I first got monitors, I had no treatment in my room, you know what I mean, outside of my booth. And I started playing and I was like, oh, my gosh, these mon it sounds like an echo chamber. So there does come a point where you do need a little bit of uh, acoustical treatment when you're listening to them. But make sure your monitors and I, I should do something about this. There's some good videos out there. Booth Junkie has some good videos about positioning, too, of your your monitors. But monitors and, and, uh, and so does some engineers, too. But monitors usually are at like a triangle right at 45 degree angles pointing right at you. And, the, and on both sides. And that just gives you a really good sound. But they're right. I, I, I mix. I like mixing with the monitors uh, just like um, just like Peter said. Absolutely. Uh, out of work, Professor. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Absolutely. Folger, good sips. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. We got a Folgers. Yeah. Got to get that smile. Um, <laughs> Grant says, OBS, yet another course. Uh, yet another course. Uh, voiceover OBS takes a lot of tweaking, still tweaking. It does. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. But I think when you get it down, it's worth it. 
Hey, you guys, thank you so much. This has been a great Fiverr Friday. Thank you so much also to everybody who uh, contributed with the Super Chat. It means the world to me. Thank you. And it means the world to me that all of you come and participate every Friday. If you get a chance, please like, 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 subscribe to this channel. Uh, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And oh, and by the way, if you're interested, we've got our Fiverr Elite meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. If you want, there'll be a link below you can join or head over to Avio's Journey com and check that out. It's where we get together as a group and work on growing our businesses uh, through Fiverr and through stats and analytics as well as reviews and all that jazz. Uh, so if you're interested in that, we'd love to have you. But thank you guys so much. You have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday and a great weekend. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, we got to... <laughs> Bye.